Hi developers, I'm Hossam Dilai, Microsoft MVP. In this video, we'll learn how to use Azure Active Directory with Azure Kubernetes Service. The goal here is to authenticate and to authorize users using Airbag in order to limit access for those users to certain resources within our Kubernetes cluster. And this tutorial will go through three main steps. The first one is creating the AKS cluster with Airbag role-based access control enabled. After that, we'll create the client and the server application in the Azure Active Directory. Those applications will be used from AKS in order to identify the users that are hosted in our Azure Active Directory. After that, we'll use the role and the role binding in order to grant access to our users to tell those users have access to those certain resources. So let's get started. And this workshop will go through five different steps. The first one is to create the Azure Active Directory server and client applications. Those will be used in order to authenticate our users to connect to IKS cluster. After that, we'll go and create the cluster itself with the config configured with the client and server applications that we have created. So here we we'll need their uh, applications ID and secrets. After that, the step number three is to create or to connect to the cluster itself as an admin so that we can configure it to connect other users. The configuration we need to do is in step number four, which is creating the role and the role bindings. So with this one, we'll allow some users to connect to the cluster with some privileges access. After that, we'll go and test the connection of our users and check if he have enough privileges to do the allowed operations. Let's start with the step number one, which is creating the client and server applications inside Active Directory. Here we have in this uh, link, Microsoft have published this article that shows how you can create those server and client applications with all the configuration you need to uh, to make. So please, um, I'll, I'll share this link, then you can follow those um, instructions, describe it here. And at the end, we should have in our Azure subscription, if we go to uh, Azure Active Directory, we select here the app registrations, we select all apps then we look for the apps that we have created here i call it it um, aks dash aad here i have my two apps that i have already created so if here i have the client and the server app if i go to the client here i'll need to use this uh, application id and the same for my server app I need here the application ID, but also I need from the settings, I need to get the uh, the key, which will be displayed here at first time. So make sure to have all those uh, parameters. In addition to the AID, um, if we go to property here, we'll need the Active Directory uh, ID, which is the one displayed right here. After this, we should have all the required four parameters in order to create the cluster. So we'll move to the step number two to, in order to create this cluster. And actually, all the uh, following steps will use lots of uh, commands using kubectl and az commands. So I have published all those commands in uh, GitHub, so you don't need to type it yourself. If you go to this repository and my rep uh, GitHub, if you go to steps.sh, then you will find all the commands that we'll be using in this demo today. I have opened this uh, repo inside my VS code right here. So if I go to step number two, it will be creating the AKS cluster with Airbag configured. Before creating the AKS cluster, Azure needs to create a resource group that will contain the cluster. So for that here, I'll be using the AZ group create. And here note that I'm using the AZ CLI, so make sure you have it uh, installed on your machine. I'll go and install this one in order to create the resource group. And not here also I'm specifying my subscription because I have multiple Azure subscriptions. But if you have only one subscription, then you'd, you can uh, dismiss this line. Now my resource group was created. 
I can move to another step which is here creating the AKS cluster. Here we'll be using AZ AKS create. With this command we can create the cluster. It will uh, live inside the resource group that, that we have already created which is here AKS uh, AAD RG2. We call our cluster AKS-AAD then we'll tell it to generate the SSH keys. Then here we'll put our uh, four required uh, keys for our client applications. It's secret. Then the server uh, application and the Active Directory uh, tenant ID use it inside Azure. So make sure you use your own uh, values for for those uh, for those parameters. I'll copy this command then I'll use it in order to generate the cluster. This will take about five minutes because it will create a full Kubernetes cluster that have three, uh, three worker uh, virtual machines. So we'll be back in five minutes. Now the cluster was created and configured successfully and here we have some information about our cluster and we can also check the creation if you go to the Azure portal if you go to resource groups and look for the one that we have created AKS AID RG2 here we can find the, uh, the cluster uh, created along with the other resource group that was created that will contain the um, virtual uh, machines, the disks, the virtual networks and all the resources needed for uh, Kubernetes with that, let's move to the step number three, which is connecting to this cluster as admin. So I'll go back to my VS code where I have the command line specified for that need. Here I'll be using AZ IKS get credentials. I'll connect to my uh, IKS cluster. Then here I'm specifying I want to connect as admin. For that here I use it dash dash admin. And now we can connect to our cluster as admin here. It was merged the, um, the AKS AAD admin as the current context. So this means we can uh, configure the cluster and we have the full privileges, full access to our cluster. So if let's try to get the uh, current context, which should display here AKS admin as this one displayed right here. After that, we'll go to the step number four, which is creating the authorization for our users. For that here, we'll be using the YAML manifest files. So we'll, be, we'll start with the role. Here we are defining a role for our user. This role, call it pod reader. It will allow our users to access the namespace. And the operations they can perform is to get or watch or list the pods. They cannot, for example, create a new pods or they cannot also access another namespace. So they will be limited inside this namespace. For that here I call it a pod reader. They only can read the pods, they cannot change uh, the pods. The role in order to be assigned to a user, we'll, we can use the role binding. The role binding is the second uh, file I'm putting here, which is also available on the GitHub repo. Here we are calling it read pods. It will have uh, the access to the default namespace only. And here we are associating the user, which is this one right here, the ID of my user inside Active Directory. I could have used the uh, my email address or the name of the user itself, but here I can also use uh, the ID of that user inside Active Directory. You can check that if we go to uh, Azure Active Directory if I go to my account and if I take a look at the users that I have here I can find myself inside this uh, this list so here it is um, the user Hussein Bilai which is me then here I have the object ID for this user so I have copied this value and used it inside my YAML file then I'm assigning to this user this particular role which is pod reader the one described in the role.yaml so this means this user will have only access to read the pods from the default namespace he cannot perform any other information 
of course here we can also use uh, the another kind which is a group so we can specify a Azure Active Directory group and each user inside that group will have the same uh, privileges as everyone inside uh, the group now let's deploy those role and role bindings so I'll do that from the terminal here let's make sure I'm inside the same directory then here I'll use kubectl apply minus f I'll start by deploying the uh, role.yaml so this will create the role for me I can check that if I run kubectl get roles then here I get the role uh, the pod reader created inside my cluster I'll do the same to apply to deploy the role dash uh, binding so once it's deployed now we can check that it exists by running kubectl get role bindings and here it was successfully uh, created inside our cluster so until now we have a user inside our active directory who can authenticate to the AKS cluster and who can perform some operations specified inside the role and role bindings now let's pretend I am that user who could be one of the developers in my uh, development team. He will connect from another machine. Let's say here he will connect from an Ubuntu machine, for example. So the first thing he need, uh, first thing he need to do is to connect to the cluster, which is here the step number five in order to test if that works correctly. So we'll we'll use the AZ AKS get credentials but without specifying the dash dash admin because that's only for the admin he uses it the first time then it won't be uh, used anymore so i'll run that here so that i can connect to my uh, cluster and here it will be using this uh, current uh, context now if we, i try to get the list of pods available on my cluster by running kubectl get pods then here i get this prompt telling me that I need to sign in and I can do that by using the web browser so I need to open the web browser inside this uh, URL so I'll copy this link address then I need to use this following uh, code I'll paste it here and here it will display this page telling me to use the code provided which is uh, the one uh, right here so I'll go and copy it then I'll paste it here click continue and now the interesting part of this demo is that it asks me to uh, to authenticate against my Azure Active Directory application that I have uh, created for that here it, it is uh, putting the name of my client application that will be used to uh, authenticate so I'll choose this user that uh, already configured with my browser then here display this page telling me that now I'm signed in inside my uh, cluster and here it run it the uh, get pods which tells me that there is no resources found now if I run the same command again then here it will display the result directly without asking me to authenticate again because now I'm already authenticated and I'm authorized to perform the kubectl get pods for example but now let's try for example to get a list to get uh, or to uh, let's try some other non allowed operations like getting the list of the pods from all the namespaces because as we said here it will return the list of the pods from only the default namespace but let's try to access all the namespaces by adding all namespaces flag I misspelled it, it should be all namespaces and here it tells me that this operation is uh, forbidden because I cannot, I, do, I don't have enough privileges to access all the uh, namespaces because this user does not have enough privileges to do that and the same applies for other operations if we try for example kubectl get ns to get the, all the namespaces then here it will tell us that this operation is forbidden because I only can access the list of the pods but not the namespaces that was all for this demo I hope you liked it and 
make sure to read my article which contains more uh, details about the steps that we have created today.